Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, I hope you had a great spring break. Uh, uh, I know I did. I uh, just want to let you know that the week of March 17th, we do not have class for DHD 150 because I will be at the Game Developers Conference in San Francisco um, having a fantastically fun time. Uh, so instead of class, I've created this video and uh, we we do have homework that will be due the following week. So uh, depending on which course you're in, uh, the 26th, the 27th, the 28th, uh, you're, you will have the homework assignment number six, Strike the Earth due. You will have Play Response number six, Dwarf Fortress due. We will have a quiz that week on chapters 16, 17, and 18, which we will talk about in class with uh, teams 1, 7, and 10, hopefully presenting or leading the discussion on those chapters that week. But uh, for today, I want to talk to you guys about a game, and uh, that game is a game called Dwarf Fortress, and probably most of you haven't heard of it. Uh, it's kind of an indie title, and uh, it's really kind of a remarkable game. Dwarf Fortress has been called one of the best games of all time, and it's also been called one of the hardest games of all time. Uh, Gama Sutra has uh, written that the scope of the game defies belief. And PC Gamer writes that uh, Dwarf Fortress produces some of the most amazing stories in gaming. Uh, Ars Technica wrote that it is the most inscrutable game of all time. And, uh, you know, the list of, of quotes and interviews, it goes on and on and on. Uh, this is the winner of multiple Game of the Year awards. Uh, this game has been featured in the Museum of Modern Art. Um, so it is uh, it's kind of, I think, a, a rather important game that we play and discuss because it is, it is particularly brilliant in some, some ways and, and particularly awful in some other ways. So a, a little bit about this game. This game is developed by a gentleman named Tarn Adams and his brother Zach. And uh, they began working on it in 2002, which means they've been working on it for about 12 years now. The Alpha was first released in 2006, and they just keep releasing a newer and newer uh, versions uh, every couple months. Uh, the game is free but uh, is supported by donations and they get uh, a ridiculous amount of donations. They get between three and five thousand dollars donated every month by the fans. Uh, some months it even peaks. Uh, I know in February of 2012 uh, they got twelve and a half thousand dollars donated for the game. So uh, I, I'm just blown away by it. Uh, so you might be asking, what is Dwarf Fortress? And maybe you've tried it uh, and were completely confused by it. Dwarf Fortress is a game that in some ways is kind of like Minecraft, uh, but it's, it's more, in, in terms of gameplay, it's more closely related to a game like The Sims. Um, a game like The Sims is it's called a god game, where you control a group of people and uh, you kind of tell them what to do. So if you like games like SimCity or The Sims or other types of games, I, I think Black and White is a god game, um, then you, you might like Dwarf Fortress. Uh, some interesting things about Dwarf Fortress. Dwarf Fortress was actually the inspiration, the original inspiration for Minecraft. When, when Notch sat down to create Minecraft, he, he originally started uh, by trying to create a clone of Dwarf Fortress. He wanted to create a game that was like it, but more accessible, more visual with 3D graphics. Uh, he tried going into first-person perspective. He didn't think it worked out that great. And then Notch saw a game called Infiniminer, and he thought, wow, Infiniminer works so great. I'm going to go back to my Dwarf Fortress clone, and I'm going to keep working on it from the first-person perspective. So uh, Minecraft kind of became a game about exploration, about building, about uh, a first-person uh, combat. Uh, whereas Dwarf Fortress is, is still very distinctly different from that in the fact that it is a god game. So in the game of Dwarf Fortress, you manage a group of dwarfs and uh, you help them to build a fortress above ground or underground and uh, you, you give them jobs to do and you build up different kinds of industries. In this game there are industries like you can create a wood industry, a stone mining industry, uh, farming, alcohol, fuel, fishing, meat, metal, beekeeping, poultry, uh, extract, armor, weapons, 
uh, finished goods, uh, furniture, soap, glass, gems, textiles, ceramics, military, healthcare, trading, administration. Um, the list goes on and on about the, the different kinds of things you can do in this game. So you can also just kind of be creative like in Minecraft. Now there is no creative mode, but uh, some people play Dwarf Fortress in order to create enormous uh, monuments, uh, the, same, the same way that some people play Minecraft creatively. Uh, the game of Dwarf Fortress has no win state, at least not one that I'm aware of. Uh, the game only has lose state. So what that means is you play the game until eventually you lose. Now, a lot of games are like this. If you think about it, Tetris is like this. You just keep playing the game until eventually uh, you lose. Uh, and uh, the funny thing about Dwarf Fortress is, it is so much of the game is procedurally generated that... Uh, things can spiral out of control and just get absolutely ridiculous. Um, you know, some of your dwarfs can, can slip and fall digging a well and one might die and, uh, you know, he might be caught in the well so you can't get his body to bury him. And then later on you might get attacked by um, giant slugs and uh, a wizard or a necromancer might show up and the necromancer might decide to uh, take that dwarf that fell down the well and died and to like reanimate uh, parts of his body. Uh, you might have, you might uh, dig down into the, the, the caverns deep below your fortress and you might find like a, a giant flying whale beast that uh, decides to come through your fortress and destroy everything. Or you might uh, accidentally dig into, uh, you know, the side of a, a reservoir and have a whole bunch of water come and flood your fortress. Or uh, a family of badgers uh, come through your fortress and kill everyone. Um, the game is, is, is utterly ridiculous and, and in a good way and the, the number of, of different stories and experiences that happen from the game uh, just keep it incredibly fresh and relevant. It's, uh, if there's any example of a game that follows the uh, game machine story type, uh, it, it, or excuse me, the story machine uh, story type. This is, this is absolutely it. So enough of me babbling about it. Let's actually sit down and play it. The reason I created this video is because the game is uh, so challenging to get started that uh, you really do kind of need someone to show you how to play. So first, let's go get the game. To get the game, you go to bay12games.com slash dwarfs, uh, or you just do a Google search for Dwarf Fortress. Here's the download page. Like I said, they, they were releasing uh, updates to the game every couple of months, uh, and then it's been almost uh, two years since they last updated it. Now, the guy, Tarn, he actually posts updates uh, every month. He lets you know what he's working on. They're still getting a ton of donations. Uh, they're absolutely still working on the game, but it's been a long time since they've released an, an updated version. Uh, so I downloaded the, uh, the Windows download right here, uh, where it says SDL. Uh, SDL is a is a library for C++, so I'm assuming he used SDL and C++ to program the game. So download that, and uh, what we're going to do is we're also going to look for uh, not a mod, but another program that's going to help us to play the game. Dwarf Fortress is kind of interesting in the fact that uh, because it can be so challenging and obtuse to play that... Uh, the community has created all kinds of mods and all kinds of add-ons and other programs to actually help you play the game. I think one of the most important uh, programs that can help you play the game is a program called Dwarf Therapist. Dwarf Therapist. And uh, if you do a Google search for it, I believe the first link that comes up is pretty good. It takes you to Google Code and you go to the download section and then you can choose one of these downloads. Now you want to grab one of the most recent downloads, which I believe will be at the top of the page. Uh, but keep in mind that these first, uh, looks like the first five listed, they say they're for OS X, which means that's a version that runs on the Mac operating system. If you're here for Windows, you probably want to grab this one right here, Dwarf Fortress 0.6.12.zip. And I'll just download that. Okay, so I've got Dwarf Fortress and I've got Dwarf Therapist. If I open up uh, my downloads folder, I need to unzip these files. If you just open them uh, and Windows opens them up in a Windows folder like this, if you try to run the program, it's not going to work because you're running it from inside of a zip file. Make sure you unzip the files first. If you're like me, you probably have WinRAR installed and you can just say uh, extract 
And there we go. I've got a folder for Dwarf Fortress and a folder for Dwarf Therapist. Inside the Dwarf Fortress folder, I'm going to find dwarffortress.exe, and I will double-click it to run it. And we get a lovely little cutscene. And if you want to skip the cutscene, you can. You just hit Escape, and uh, you might have to hit Escape a couple times. It'll take you to the main menu. Now, at the main menu, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and hit the Maximize button to uh, play the game full screen. And if you roll the mouse wheel like I'm doing, you can actually zoom in or zoom out. And what it's actually doing is it's, you know, it's trying to render the game at a higher resolution. Uh, you don't have to do this. I might do it for the sake of the video so that things are easier for you to, set, to see as I'm playing. But uh, other than that, th you will not use your mouse to play this game at all you will use the keyboard entirely. Okay, so put the mouse aside and we're going to start by choosing create new world. So you use the arrow keys up and down and uh, make sure create new world is selected and hit enter. So just like in Minecraft, a, an entirely new world is going to be generated for us uh, when we play. So every time we play is different. So we have to choose some parameters first of all. If you press the left and right keys, you can, you can set the world size. I want my world size to maybe be small or smaller. Uh, this is going to help the game uh, create the world in a more timely manner. So I'll choose small. And then for history, choose short or very short. You don't need a lot of history in your world. Uh, and it takes a very long time to calculate that much history. Number of civilizations might say... Uh, low, it doesn't really matter that much. Uh, med uh, maximum number of sites, medium is fine. Number of beasts, maybe go low on that. Natural savagery. This is kind of how savage and difficult the world is going to be. How many, you know, zombie giraffes are going to try to attack your fortress. Uh, I'm going to go with very low. And you might want to do the same thing your first time playing. And then for mineral occurrence, this of course is how often you're going to find minerals as you dig through the rock. Uh, I'm going to choose everywhere. <laughs> when you're ready to go, you're going to hit Y, and you can watch your world being generated before your eyes. And uh, <laughs> I chose a very short amount of time, so only five years went by since the creation of the world. If you chose to create a, a short uh, amount of history, um, then I believe 125 years go by. If you go with medium, 250 years go by. And what it's doing is, is it's actually creating history. It's creating uh, real people are being born, they're having interactions with each other, they're going on adventures, they're building towns and roads and cities, they're dying, there are wars being fought. All of these things are happening in the history of your world. When it's all done, you can use the arrow key to kind of move the cursor around and, and take a look at your world. Um, but uh, from here, you pretty much just hit the enter button to accept the world. And it's going to save it to your hard drive. Once it's done saving it, you can now choose start playing from the main menu. So I'm going to choose start playing. And it's going to ask you what kind of game you want to play. One of the cool things about Dwarf Fortress is that there are in completely different games. Now in Minecraft you have creative mode and you have adventure mode and you have survival mode. Uh, in here, these modes are so completely different they're almost different games. Dwarf Fortress is the god game that I was telling you about. Adventurer is actually a roguelike. So if you like RPGs or roguelike games and you want to go explore this enormous world you just created, you can choose Adventurer. And then Legends I'm a little foggy on. I think Legends might actually be uh, an arena type game. I, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but in any case, today we're going to be playing Dwarf Fortress. So make sure you choose Dwarf Fortress and hit Enter. Okay. So uh, it's going to take you to this screen. And on this screen, you're going to see three maps of your world. The map on the left is the local map. That's a very close map. The map in the middle is your region map. And the map on the right is the world map. Depending on the size of the world you, you created and how much you're, uh, you've zoomed into the interface here, the region map and the world map might look the same. Uh, but otherwise, they might look a little bit different. The region map is zoomed in a little bit. If you use the arrow keys, you can move the cursor around on the region map, and you can look at different places in the world. 
What we have to do is we have to find a place that we like enough and we say, you know what, I'm going to try to build a fortress there. So this isn't a game about going out and exploring the entire world. It's about choosing a small place and trying to create a town, a village, a fortress, whatever you want. So <clears throat> the, uh, we have the ocean out here, obviously. So we're not going to choose to create our fortress on the ocean. Uh, we have mountains in here. There are forests. Uh, basically, what I tend to do is I move my cursor around using the arrow keys, and I look over on the right-hand side of the screen. And I look at right here where it says clay, deep soil, shallow metals, and deep metals. Uh, basically, what I want to try to do is I want to try to find a place that has soil so that I can grow plants. I want a place that doesn't have an aquifer. Okay, it's very important that you don't have an aquifer. And usually for me when I play, almost every place has an aquifer. See, here, this is a place that has an aquifer. What an aquifer is, is it's kind of like an underground lake or it is porous rock that water can flow through. What happens is, is as you dig down into an aquifer, you create a big uh, pond or a big lake. And if you're trying to dig down and do some mining and get metals, uh, it can be very, very difficult to get past an aquifer. Now, some very, people cl uh, some very clever people have found ways to do it, but uh, we're not going to be doing that. So make sure you find a place that does not have an aquifer. Uh, soil would be nice. Metals are, of course, nice if you want to have any sort of metal industry. And then the next thing you probably want to look at is you want to make sure that the region that you pick isn't uh, too, too deadly, that there are trees, that there's vegetation. Because one of the things we're going to be doing is we're going to be chopping down trees to create things like beds and wheelbarrows and buckets and doors and tables. So I like to have trees. So I, I've kind of found a place, uh, there's lots of places on my map that have uh, trees and soil and no aquifers. If you look on the, on the local map over on the left, you could even find a place that's near a river. Um, there's all kinds of information, additional information, that you might be interested in, though. So if you hit tab, you can actually see on the right-hand side of the screen who your neighbors are in that region. So this is telling me that I'm relatively close to other dwarfs, that I'm close to elves, I'm close to humans, and I'm close to goblins. Notice that I am at war with the goblins, okay? Um, just something to keep in mind, that they're nearby. If you hit tab again, you can see the different dwarven civilizations, and you can choose which one that you come from. I'm coming from a dwarven civilization called the Reputed Banner. If you hit tab again, uh, the local map turns into a relative elevation map where you can see where the high areas are and the low areas are. And if you hit tab again, the local map turns into a map telling you basically how, fla uh, how, how flat or how uh, hilly the area is. Notice this area is actually quite flat. Now it's up to you whether you want to try to create your fortress in an area with hills or cliffs or whether you want to try to create it in an area that's flat. Um, typically, people like to burrow into the side of hills, so it might not be bad to have hills. Um, although, it might be less confusing for you to be in an area that's relatively flat. On the local map, you'll notice that there is a, for me, it's a 4x4 four four region highlighted. And if you want to choose specifically on the local map where you're going to start, you can actually move that region around by using the UMH uh, and, and K keys on the keyboard. So if I press H, notice that goes left, and if, if I press M, it goes down, K is right, and U is up. You can even choose to make uh, your starting point larger by holding down the Shift key and pressing U, M, K, and H. Um, it's not really necessary, though. So let's see. I found an area that uh, has clay, deep soil, shallow metals, deep metals. It's heavily forested. The temperature is temperate, which is good. It means it's not going to be too hot. It's not going to be too cold. Uh, the surroundings, there's wilderness, so there might be, you know, monsters or whatever. Probably not. If I hit tab a couple times, I can see that I'm in an area with some hills. That's fine. Um, so I think I'm, I'm going to go ahead and try to spawn, or spawn. I'm going to try to play my game in this area. So when you're ready to play, you're going to hit E. Okay. Now, don't choose play now. Instead, I'm going to go down to prepare for the journey carefully. What this allows me to do is take a look at my seven dwarves, and I can give them skills before we actually leave to create our fortress. So I've got these dwarves. They have these weird dwarven names like Imush, Godin, Nabal. Um, 
and we can see that they're on the right hand side of the screen. There's a large list of skills. If I use the arrow keys to press up or down, uh, I can choose which dwarf I'm looking at. So I'm going to leave it on iMush. And if I press right, I move my cursor over to the list of skills. Notice that there are a lot of skills that these dwarfs can have. And if I keep pressing down, notice that there are actually multiple pages of skills. Holy cow. Keep going down. There we go. That is a lot of different skills that your dwarfs can have. Um, this can seem overwhelming, but don't worry about it too much. Uh, dwarfs can still do things even if they don't have skills in those things. So, for example, if you <laughs> don't give any of your dwarfs the bone doctor skill um, or the surgeon skill, you can still have a dwarf perform surgery even if they're not skilled in it. Of course, that might lead to infection and disease and and then if a dwarf dies, his friend might get so upset that he commits suicide, which upsets someone else, and they commit suicide. That's called a tantrum spiral. Well, all your dwarfs, they get progressively more upset, and they all commit suicide or kill each other. That's fun. Um, so what I want to do is uh, give these dwarfs some skills. The most relevant skills are probably mining, woodcutting, masonry, and carpentry. It's the top four ones. So to give a dwarf a skill, I'm going to press plus on the keyboard. Okay. Now, it's not the plus next to the backspace, it's the plus over on the numpad, if you have a numpad on your keyboard. If you don't have a numpad on your keyboard, you can use the plus button next to the backspace, you just have to hold down shift. Now, we can change this setting once we're in-game. So, I'm going to give uh, this guy iMush, I'm going to make him a miner, I'm going to give him a masonry skill. Um, you don't necessarily want to use all of your skill points, because you need some of those points to bring items with you. So I'll give a, actually it's not a bad idea to give lots of dwarfs the mining skill, because dwarfs do a lot of mining. Okay. And uh, I'm going to give maybe half my dwarfs the woodcutting skill and the carpenter skill. Oops, let's see. Okay. And then maybe I'll choose one of my dwarfs, like this last guy, Onul, and maybe I'll give him some skills that make him a good leader. So, at some point, I could come down here and give him one skill point for leader. I could... I also want someone who's going to be a record keeper in my, in my fortress, and a broker. A broker is someone who uh, is going to deal when, when trade caravans come. So I might want to come in here and give him one point for record keeping, one point for organizing, one point for appraising. Uh, yeah, and he's, he's going to make a good guy who can do uh, some of the more administrative, bureaucratic stuff that, that, I, that need doing. Okay? So uh, I've given these dwarfs some skills. I'm pretty happy with how I've given them skills. If you hit tab, you can see on the left, these are all of the items that you're bringing with you. You can actually change which items you're bringing with you. Uh, if you want. If you've played the game before and you have a very specific strategy on what you want to do, you can, you can bring more or less of any given item. So, for example, at the top, I'm bringing two copper picks. These are pickaxes, and I need these to dig. I need these to mine. Uh, and since I'm going to be doing a lot of mining, maybe I want to bring three copper pickaxes. Okay? So, notice that the, the pickaxe is worth 44 points, and down at the bottom of the screen I can see that I have 148 points remaining. So I can afford to bring another pickaxe. So with copper pick selected, I'm going to hit the plus button. Now you can see that I'm bringing three copper pickaxes. Now I might maybe want to bring another battle axe. Battle axes are used for fighting, but they're also used for chopping down wood. So I'm going to bring three of those. Uh, and then in, a, in, in the last update, they added, I believe, mine carts and wheelbarrows. Um, and in order for the dwarves to move rock now, they have to have wheelbarrows. So we're only bringing one wheelbarrow. I'm actually going to want to bring at least two. Uh, so I'm going to go down here to the bottom. And that's weird. I accidentally just removed the wheelbarrow. Um, if you accidentally remove something entirely or you want to add something new, uh, it's not on the right. On the right-hand side of the screen are animals, if you want to bring animals with you. You can bring animals if you want pets, if you want food, if you want to uh, train dogs for hunting or combat. 
Uh, you can have an industry, a, a, you know, a butcher industry where you butcher animals. There's all kinds of animals that you can bring. I don't typically worry about that too much, but you can if you are into uh, animal husbandry. That is the art of raising animals. Uh, if you want to add new items to bring with you, you hit the end button. Hit the end button, and there's just pages and pages of categories of items. And each of these categories of items has subcategories on the right. It's crazy. So I'm going to try to find a wheel, a wheelbarrow. Wheelbarrow. So where on earth is that? Miscellaneous? No. Bags, backpacks, tools, maybe. Got to go down through this list. See if I can find wheelbarrow. I don't see any. Instruments, toys, crafts, extracts, powders, cheeses, shields, headwear, bodywear, trap components. You can actually bring wood with you if you uh, are embarking. Uh, if you're building a fortress in an area that doesn't have trees, you can choose to bring wood with you. You can bring stone with you. Uh, <laughs> I don't know the, where the wheelbarrows are. Um, I could keep looking for them. Uh, it's kind of annoying that I can't find them. But I can build them once I get there. Uh, there's enough trees where I'm going where I can very easily build a wooden wheelbarrow. Um, so I guess I probably shouldn't worry about it too much. Man, whatever. Okay, whatever. I'm going to hit escape. And... Uh, yeah, it's looking pretty good. What you might want to do before you start your game is name your fortress. Now, if you look down at the bottom of the screen, you have to hit uh, capital F. So hold down shift and hit F. And you can go into this screen where you choose the name for your fortress. Now, I believe for your homework assignment, I have specified a specific name for you. Uh, if you want to get credit for that homework assignment, I do not remember what it is off the top of my head. Uh, so for example, I don't know, it might be something stupid like smooth monkey or something like that. So I might go to first adjective, hit enter, and then I could go through this entire, this huge list and look for the word smooth. Um, or I could hit E to do a search. So I hit E, I start typing in the word smooth, and there it is. Hit enter. I set my first adjective to smooth. However, does not appear like it worked. Well, what if I set the front compound to smooth? There we go. Smooth, and then for rear compound, what did I say? Monkey? Ooh, Smooth Cosmos. That's kind of an interesting name. Um, smooth. Ooh, how about Smooth Ale? That's kind of a cool name for a fortress. There we go. Uh, smooth Ale is the name of my fortress. You might, again, check your homework assignment because I have a specific one for you to choose. Um, and, in, and it's kind of cool. You can actually see that um, there's an English translation and you can see what it is in Dwarven. And uh, Smooth Ale is Umarma, Umarmab Doug. Whatever. That's, that's the Dwarven name. Uh, when I'm done, I can hit Escape. And when I'm ready to play, I hit E for Embark. The game's going to take a second while it loads up your area. It's going to give you a little bit of story, basically telling you that you left your civilization to go start a new civilization. Uh, your caravan uh, brings you to your new place. For me, that's smooth ale. And uh, it's just the beginning of winter, I believe. So good luck. Strike the earth. You hit enter, and you are on a map. And the music starts playing, I believe. Now, this probably looks pretty confusing. If you are in a temperate or cold area like I am, you'll notice that the entire map is covered in snow. So everything's all white. Over on the right-hand side of the screen is a, excuse me, is a mini-map. If you like the mini-map there, of course you can keep it there. I actually like having more screen space for my main map. So 
If I hit Tab, I actually get rid of my mini-map, and if I hit Tab again, I move my menu over to the right. If you get really good at this game, you probably don't even need the menu, but uh, you need the menu. Um, so if I use the arrow keys, I can look around. Okay, so there's a limited area of this world that uh, I have access to. And actually, where are my dwarfs? Seriously, where are my dwarfs? If you lose your dwarfs, you can hit F1, and it'll take you right to them. So what are we actually seeing here? Well, if you look at the center of my screen, this big white blob right here, that's actually the top of a hill. And then those little down triangles all around the hill mean that the, that the, uh, the hill slopes down away from this level. So we're actually looking down from above. And uh, if you look up here, I have these triangles that point up telling me that the, that the hill slopes up, and then I'm seeing a cross-section of the hill right there where it's all black. So how do you move the camera up or down the, the Z levels? Well, you actually use the greater than and less than keys on the keyboard. Now, it is literally the greater than and less than symbol, so you can't just hit those keys. You have to hold down Shift. So if you hold Shift and you hit the greater than or less than keys, you can move the camera up for, if you press less than and down if you press uh, greater than. So that's how you look around. Uh, take, take some time to get used to it. Um, basically, if you're looking at this, you're looking at rock. You're looking at a cross-section of rock. And if you go up and you're looking at this, you're looking at empty air. If you see these little dots on the screen, that means you're, you're looking at empty air, but there's actually something just beneath it. So if I press down, you can see that, yes, there, where all those little dots were, there are, there's, in fact, a snowy... Um, land here. Okay, so how do you start your dwarf fortress? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to start digging into the side of one of these hills, or maybe we'll just dig straight down if you don't have any hills, and we'll we'll start chopping down trees, we'll start creating bedrooms, uh, all kinds of fun stuff. Oh, that's kind of weird. Uh, this dwarf here on the center of my screen, he's like, he's standing on a, a tiny little hill right here. Like, so tiny, it's only f four, four blocks. That's really, really kind of weird. Um, in any case, sorry, I just got to zoom out a little bit. Uh, what we want to do is we, we got to notice that hopefully right now your game is paused. Uh, if you look in the upper left-hand corner, it says paused, which is good. Uh, if you hit space, it unpauses the game. And then you might see, like, people moving around doing things, okay? If you hit space again, it pauses the game. What, what you do is uh, you give orders when the game is paused, you tell the dwarves to do things, and then you unpause the game and they go do them. Okay. Now, for example, what I might want to do is I might want to start chopping down all of these trees right here. It's probably going to take you a while to get used to what all of these symbols mean. Uh, after playing the game for a while, though, it, it actually becomes really easy. I can see that these are all different kinds of trees. I don't know what they all are. There's snow on the ground. And then these little guys, these little smiley faces, those are my dwarves. The different colors of the dwarves tell me what different jobs they have. So these guys are miners. This guy right here, he's probably a, um, like a woodcutter, and that's probably why he's that color. So what I want to do is uh, give these guys some jobs. So if you look over on the right, there's a huge menu over here, and it can take some time to get used to. Uh, many of your simple jobs are under designations. Okay, the shortcut for that is D. So if you press the D button, you pull up the Designations menu. The Designations menu allows you to tell your dwarves to mine, to channel, to remove stairs, to build stairs, to build ramps, to chop down trees, to gather plants, to smooth uh, stones, uh, carve fortifications, carve tracks for, uh, for mine carts. There's all kinds of stuff you can do. Okay? Now, what I want to do is I want to tell these guys to chop down all these trees. So if you hit T, after you're in the designations menu, you'll notice that chop down trees is highlighted. Now, when you move the cursor with the arrow keys, it doesn't move the whole screen. It just moves a little, uh, moves a little X cursor. Um, what I want to do is move my X cursor in an er to a spot that's going to be the top left-hand corner uh, because I want to select all of these trees. So I'm going to move my cursor up here, and then I'm going to hit Enter. 
And when I move my cursor, notice there's a little blinking plus there now. If I move my cursor somewhere else, like say down here, and I hit enter, what has just happened is uh, those two enter presses have created a big rectangle. And that big rectangle has selected all of the trees inside of it. Now all of the trees are highlighted. And when I unpause the game, any dwarfs that have uh, the job of chopping down trees and any dwarfs that and have a battle axe, they'll go chop down those trees. So if I hit spacebar, uh, excuse me, I'm going to hit escape to go back to my main menu, then hit spacebar, we'll see that, uh, sure enough, these guys, uh, they come out here, they chop down the trees. Uh, one by one, they're just chopping them all down. Now notice that what they leave after they chop down the trees is they leave these logs on the ground. These logs right here. That's pretty cool. So chopping down trees gives us logs, obviously. Now, how do you know what all of these things are? Maybe you don't know. Uh, well, in your menu, there is an option called Look. It's, in the, it's down here, bottom right. The shortcut is K. If you press K, you now have a little cursor right here, a little X cursor. And as you move it around, what it'll do is on the right, it tells you what's underneath that cursor. So if I move my cursor up here to what that is an up arrow, it tells me there's a snow-covered larch there. And larch is a kind of tree. And beneath the larch is a, is a pile of snow. Cool. Um, if I move my cursor over here, it tells me that I have pine logs and I have snow-covered clay loam. Now loam in this case, that is the, uh, it is a kind of soil, okay? So underneath the logs, there's a pile of snow and underneath, underneath the pile of snow, there is some soil um, and that soil type is a clay loam. Uh, if I move my cursor over this H, it tells me that there, I have a horse. And that makes sense because um, when you arrive in a caravan, you typically have horses, donkeys, camels, uh, or yaks uh, actually pull your caravan there. So you should have two, two animals with you. I have two horses. And you can move your cursor around the screen when you're in this look mode, and you can basically look and see what anything is if you're confused. So uh, I'm going to hit escape to go back, and uh, I want to give these guys more jobs to do. Now, uh, if I look over here, I've got this. I've got a hill, and I'm, I'm seeing a cross section of the hill. Um, I can see it slopes up, and then it slopes up away from me, and I can't actually see the top of the hill. But if I want to, I could burrow into the side of the hill. I could dig into the side of it, and uh, that is under the designations menu. So I'm going to hit D, and then I'm going to hit D again for mine. And if I come over here, I can dig into the side of rock by mining into it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my cursor right here on the side of the rock. I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to move it to the left a couple spaces and hit enter again. That has just created a rectangle that has selected everything I want to mine. When I unpause the game, you'll notice a dwarf will run over here with a, with a uh, pickaxe and he'll mine uh, that away. Now this is clay loam and clay loam is not rock, it's soil. So they, they actually dig through it very quickly. On your game it might go a little bit slower as they dig through the rock. Uh, and then notice that if I move my camera up, um, it hasn't affected the top of the hill. Okay, I'm actually just digging into the side of the hill. And then the red here tells me that uh, these little red symbols tells me that there is a red floor right here. And the red actually is a color that they're using for clay loam. So uh, these hills are kind of too small to build a fortress into. What I'm going to do instead of digging sideways into the rock or soil is I'm going to dig straight down. So I'm going to find a spot that's kind of open, kind of by my, my caravan where I started. And I'm going to go into my designations menu. And I want to dig uh, down through the, the snow and through the top of the soil. I want to build some stairs that go down. So what you want to do is, after you hit D for designations, find downward stairway in the designations menu. That's J. Press J on your keyboard, hit Enter. And then if you want more than one staircase, like you expect a lot of people to be moving in and out of your fortress, uh, move your cursor and then hit enter again. Now I've designated four uh, staircases to be built down here. 
when I unpause the game, my dwarfs with pickaxes, they'll run over here and they'll, they'll dig up those stairs. Dig, 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 dig. There they go. So now I have a staircase that goes down. If I go down a level, okay, I can see the tops of the rock now. I can see uh, the top of this rock, which is gray, and the top of this rock, which is not gray. Um, what I want to do is tell the dwarves to dig down into that rock, but not just dig down into it, actually dig a staircase down into it so I can get onto this level. So what I'm going to do is hit D for designation, and then I want to build an up-down staircase here. Okay, So I'm going to hit I for up-down staircase, hit Enter, and then make sure underneath where I built all the down staircases, I'm building these up-down staircases. If I unpause my game, they'll run over, they'll dig up, and then there we go. They're already done building. And I can keep going down that way, because now I can see the top of the rock on the next level. And I can keep digging down, 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 down. We'll do that later. But for now, now that I have kind of a, uh, I'm on this level with the rock, I can dig out into the rock. So I'm going to go and hit D for my designations menu, D for mine, and then I'm going to build a hallway coming out this way. Now, if you hit right on the keyboard, you move your cursor one at a time, and that can be kind of slow. If you hold shift and you press right, it moves 10 at a time, and that works a little bit better. So I'm going to tell it to designate to carve out these 20 pieces of rock right here, which is probably, well, let's see what it is. It might be more clay loam. So my guys come down here and they dig out this rock, and then when they're done, they go back up to the, to the caravan. So uh, using this method, we can dig out uh, meeting places, we can dig out bedrooms, uh, storerooms, we can create underground uh, farms. There's all kinds of stuff we can do. In fact, I'm probably going to start a farm down here on this level because we have clay loam. And like I said, clay loam is a kind of soil, and that's perfect for creating a farm. If you don't have soil in your area, uh, you, you, you cannot farm on rock without first getting the rock wet to turn it into mud. So uh, that's kind of tricky to do, actually. You have to find a water source. Then you have to um, designate that the dwarfs go use buckets to get water from the pond, and then they go dump it on the rock. Luckily, I have soil here, so I can build an underground farm. Uh, underground farms typically grow things like, you know, mushrooms or whatever. So I'm going to build a room over here. I'm going to designate an area, and uh, that's going to be where I build a farm. And if I unpause the game, no dwarfs can come over here and mine this out because they can't get to it. Notice there's a wall right here. So I'm going to designate a doorway to be built right there. Uh, to designate just one spot, of course, you hit Enter once, and then you hit Enter again. Okay. Let's say you designate something that you don't want. I don't want any dwarfs to dig that out. That was a mistake. Well, if you look in your designation menu, there's an option to remove designation. Okay, Hit X to do that. And now what you can do is you can create a rectangle around what you want to remove as a designation. So you can cancel your orders that way. When I unpause the game, hit Escape to go back to the main menu, and I hit Space Bar to unpause, my dwarfs run over here, and they start digging out this room. The three dwarfs that have pickaxes. And it went really, really fast because, like I said, they're digging out soil. Now, what I want to do is I want to build a farm over here. I'm going to go into my, I hit escape, so I'm paused, or excuse me, I hit space, so I'm paused. Um, I want to go into my building menu to build a farm. So I hit B for that. And notice that there is an enormous list of things to build. And in fact, the list is so long that you have to go down through it to even see everything. Now, don't press up or down, because that moves your map. To go through this list of items, you actually have to press the plus and minus keys on the keyboard. Now, remember that I said if uh, you're trying to use this, the, the plus next to the backspace, you have to hold down shift. I think that's really annoying. I want to change my key mapping real quick. So I'm going to hit Escape to go back to my main menu. I'm going to hit Escape again to go to my pause menu, or whatever this is. And I'm going to go to key bindings. Under key bindings, I'm going to go to general. And I'm going to scroll down until I find, oh, which one is it? Here we go. 
it is move secondary selector down. Okay, and right now it's saying by letter and uh, plus. Okay, once I have on the left, I have move secondary selector down selected. I press the right button on the keyboard to go over to the right hand side of the menu. I click on add bind, or I hit enter with add binding selected, and it's asking me to hit a key, a key on the keyboard. So I'm going to hit the plus button that's next to the backspace and, uh, and then I hit enter and now it's saying that uh, if you press a plus on the keyboard it will move the secondary selector down or if you hit this position on the keyboard this button next to the backspace it'll go down so uh, the, the interface here is very confusing very obtuse but that's how you that's how you fix that little issue hit escape to go back to uh, your key binding and macro settings hit escape again to go I'm sorry don't hit escape go down to save and exit hit enter and then go up to the top and choose return to game hit enter okay now to build a farm hit B and now if you hit the the plus button next to the backspace button on the keyboard you can go and look at everything you can build in the buildings menu Okay, for me, I'm, I'm zoomed in, but for me, it's over two pages long. That's a lot of stuff. Um, it's, it's a lot of this stuff you just kind of have to memorize um, over time. So I want to build a farm plot, and the key for that is P. So hit P, and now what you do is you move your cursor, and you're going to tell it where to build the farm. Now, this is not the same as a designation. With a designation, you hit Enter to choose one corner of the box, and then you move the cursor and you hit enter again and it chooses the other corner of the box. That's not the way a farm plot works. The interface completely changes here for, I, I don't know why, I think it's very frustrating. What you're going to do is if you look on the right, notice that if you, you're going to use U and M to change the height of the farm plot. And you're going to use K and H to change the width of the farm plot. So if I hit K, my farm plot gets wider and if I hit M, excuse me, if I hit U, my farm plot gets taller. And I'm going to make it so that it fills up the entire space. And then uh, once it fills up the whole space, I'm going to hit enter. And now it's got a farm plot there and it's blinking. What that means is the farm plot isn't built yet. I've just added the job to build it. So I'm going to hit escape, go back to this menu, and I'm going to hit space to unpause. Now hopefully some dwarf is going to come by and he's going to plant the farm. And uh, actually, looks like this guy is doing exactly that. Can't tell. Can't tell what he's doing. Oh, I don't know what he's doing. I, I'm going to pause the game. I hit V on the keyboard. And uh, V allows me to select my units, my people, and see what they're up to. So if I hit V and I come over to this guy, if I look on the right, I can see his name. His name is Rygoth Rabmistem. He's a miner. Um, he is male. His nickname is his full name. And he currently has no job. Uh, then I see a list of his skills. I can see that he's an adequate miner. He's a novice mason. And he's, he's tried persuading before. He's tried negotiating. He's tried intimidating. Okay, I'm not really interested in seeing the miscellaneous skills. So if you look at the bottom of on the right hand side of the screen, I can filter out what skills I'm looking at. Right now I'm looking at combat skills, labor skills, and miscellaneous skills. Most relevant to this game are labor skills and secondary are combat skills. I'm going to hit M to turn off miscellaneous skills. Okay, now I can see that he has no job that he's doing right now, but he's an adequate miner and he's a novice mason. Now, I told you earlier that even if a dwarf doesn't have a job, um, or excuse me, doesn't have a skill in a particular job, he can still go do the job. So the problem is right now, I don't have any dwarfs that have, um, I haven't given any dwarfs the permission to go be farmers. Okay, when you, when you started the game and you gave the dwarfs skills, they immediately gave themselves permission to go do those things. So when I said, hey, you have mining skill, you have mining skill, you have mining skill, all of those dwarves with mining skill, they are set to go do mining if the mining job comes up. None of the, my dwarves have been given permission to do farming. I have to change that if I want this farm built. Okay, 
So how do I do it? Well, at the bottom on the right hand of the screen, the right hand side of the screen, I can see that I can I can see several things for this dwarf. Right now I'm in a category called uh, general because that's highlighted. Okay. If I hit I, I can switch to see this dwarf's inventory. It's a lot of stuff he's holding. If I hit P, I get this confusing menu. Um, we'll come back to that. If I hit W, I can see every part of this dwarf's body and whether or not he's currently wounded. Now, this game tracks every tiny little part of uh, each dwarf's bodies. So I could actually see that my dwarf has, for example, I don't know, 32 teeth, and his back third tooth like is broken, for example. Um, this game is uh, simulates an incredible amount of detail. So, and then if I hit Z, I can see the status of this dwarf, and uh, it says that this dwarf owns 14 objects. Those objects are probably the objects that he currently has in his inventory right now. If I hit Enter, I can see this dwarf's thoughts and preferences, and every dwarf has uh, all kinds of information about things that they like, things they don't like, uh, what their personality is like. So I can see that, um, I can see which gods this dwarf um, worships. I can see that he's thin and muscular. I can see that his eyes are aquamarine and his hair is wavy. Every dwarf is completely different from one another. Um, unfortunately, this dwarf has poor focus and he has a bad, a very bad sense of empathy. So this guy just doesn't even care about other people. Um, he handles stress well. He's very friendly. He's very assertive. He's very active, and so on and so forth. I can see that this dwarf, he likes uh, chromite. He likes steel, sapphire, dingo leather, uh, the color green. He likes slabs, walruses for their tusks, and rope reeds for the precise lines. So it's, it's kind of interesting. This dwarf likes all of these very specific things like sapphire. If when I'm mining, let's say I find a bunch of sapphire, I can take the sapphire and I can put it in this dwarf's bedroom and it will actually make him happier in the long run. He'll have happy thoughts and those happy thoughts will keep him more content and less likely to go into a tantrum spiral and murder everyone. Uh, I'm going to hit escape. If I hit R, I can see this dwarf's relationship with every other dwarf and deity. So I can see that uh, of the seven other dwarfs in the fortress, he is friends with three of those dwarfs and he's been a long-term acquaintance with the other three. Interesting. And I can see the two gods that he worships. I'm going to hit escape to go back. Um, if you hit Y here, you can actually customize the dwarf by giving him a, giving this dwarf a nickname or giving his uh, profession a nickname. Right now, I think his profession is uh, minor, I believe. Yeah. It says he's a minor. Okay. So I'm going to hit P to go back to preferences. And in preferences, this is where we actually set the jobs that this dwarf is allowed to do. Okay. Now, we do uh, most of that under this labor menu. So I'm going to hit L to go into the labor menu. And in the labor menu, I can see all the different types of jobs. Okay. Now remember not to use the up and down arrow keys here. You have to use the plus and minus button to go up and down this menu. So if I want this guy to do farming, I'm going to go into the farming slash related category. So I'm going to select it and hit enter. And now I can see all of these different farming related jobs. Butchery, Tanning, farming, dyeing, excuse me, uh, plant gathering, brewing, milling, lye making, cheese making, milking, shearing, spinning, cooking, pressing, beekeeping, just to name a few. I'm going to go up and select farming and hit enter. And now it is highlighted. If I hit escape, we'll go back to this menu, hit escape again, go back to this main menu. If I unpause the game, this dwarf has now been given permission to do farming, even though he doesn't have the skill in farming. So if I unpause the game, he should run over and he should try to plant this farm. Oh, there we go. And um, I, 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 I use the word plant, but that's actually not accurate. He's, he's, he's building the farm. He's tilling it. So now he's done. I have a farm here, but nothing's planted in the farm. So to plant stuff in this farm, I'm going to hit the Q button on the keyboard, and the Q button brings up my building properties. Now a farm is a building, according to this game, and uh, I see on the right-hand side of the screen when my cursor is near this farm, I have I can follow uh, I have all these different options on the right-hand side of the screen for what I want to do with this farm. 
So right now, spring is selected, and I can choose what these dwarves should grow in the spring on this farm. Um, I think I brought plump helmet seeds with me, so I'm going to hit the plus button on the keyboard and then hit enter when I have plump helmet selected. So now in the spring, they will plant plump helmet seeds in this farm. I'm going to hit B to go to summer. I'm going to go down to plump helmets and hit enter. I'm going to hit C to go to autumn. Go down to plump helmets, hit enter. Hit D for winter. Go down to plump helmets and hit enter. So now all four seasons of the year, this farm will grow plump helmets, which are a kind of mushroom. So I'm going to hit escape. And if I unpause the game, uh, that dwarf, I think, went to go get seeds. Yeah, he came back with some seeds from the caravan, and now he's planting the seeds. And uh, he'll do that for a while. That's taken him a while to plant the seed. He doesn't have, he's not skilled in farming, so it does take him a little while to plant. So I have one seed planted there in that farm. That's pretty cool. I'm going to hit, it, oh, I'm gonna hit uh, space to pause the game uh, because I need to do some other things other than just planting. If I go out uh, to the top of my fortress, outside, you'll notice that I, I just have a whole bunch of wood strewn all about. And that's fine and everything, but I'm going to tidy it up into something called a stockpile. When you, everything you build in this game should be stored in stockpiles, and the objects in the stockpiles can then be used for crafting. So what I'm going to do is hit P to bring up my stockpile menu. And I have a cursor that I can move around the screen again. And on the right-hand side of the screen, I'm going to hit W to choose wood. That's going to let me create a wood stockpile. I'm going to hit Enter to create one corner of the stockpile, move the cursor, and hit Enter again to create the other corner of the stockpile. Now I have a stockpile for wood. And uh, if I hit Escape and then I hit Spacebar to unpause the game, You'll notice that the dwarves who aren't busy doing anything, they'll run over, they'll grab the wood, and they'll put it in the stockpile. Um, and that's because all of the dwarves, by default, have that hauling skill. Where they're, uh, they're like, okay, well, if I don't, uh, excuse me, not hauling skill, but hauling job. So if they're not doing anything else, they will carry stuff around if I have uh, the job to carry stuff around. So I actually have... Looks like five dwarfs right now. One just ran away. I don't know what he's doing. But I had five dwarfs carrying wood over to the stockpile. Um, and now all the wood is stored in the stockpile. That's pretty great. Now, if you don't have wood, hopefully maybe you brought some with you. Um, but if not, know, you're, you're, know that your caravan is actually made of wood. Okay. Now, for some reason, there's, a I think, a rendering glitch on mine where my caravan, I can only see it on this this one uh, spot on the screen right here because it's up on this little weird uh, four block hill. But yours is probably two by three or so. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit Q. Remember that's my building settings. And, oh, that's weird. I have a glitch where <laughs> I don't even have a caravan. Uh, what you wanna do is you wanna hit Q and then when you're near your caravan, it'll give you the option to disassemble the building by hitting X. And what that'll do is the dwarfs will tear apart the caravan to get pieces of wood, and then they'll take the wood over to the wood stockpile if you have a wood stockpile. Um, other things to consider. We're going to want to create stockpiles for all of the different items that we create. So one thing you might want to do is uh, create a stockpile for rock. Now, I don't currently have any rock because I haven't dug down deep enough to hit any. But uh, I'm going to create a stockpile for rock. Now, rock, you, you probably want to be a big stockpile. So I'm going to go to my main menu, hit P for stockpile, move my cursor about where I want one corner of the stockpile to be, hit S for stone, and then hit enter for one corner, move the cursor, hit enter for the other corner. And there is my stone stockpile. Now, if I had any stone, these guys would go grab the wheelbarrow. Oh, I didn't bring a wheelbarrow. <laughs> if I had a wheelbarrow, uh, they would use the wheelbarrow to bring the stone over to the stockpile. Let's say you don't have a wheelbarrow, like I don't have a wheelbarrow. Well, what you want to do is you have to build a, a carpenter 
workshop so that we can build a wheelbarrow out of this wood that we have. So what I'm going to do is hit escape, go back to this main menu. I'm going to hit B for building, W for workshop, and C for carpenter's workshop. Trust me, I know, those, I, those menus are really big. Um, what I'm going to do is put a carpenter's workshop right here. Uh, next to the wood stockpile. I think it kind of makes sense. Notice that we don't change the size of the workshop. It is a 3x3. Three three. We just choose where to position it using the arrow keys. Notice, of course, that uh, we need free space to position it. So we can't position it if it's blocked by a tree or a stockpile or anything else. So I'm going to position it right here and hit enter. Now here's the thing. In order for us to build things, we need material. And it's asking me what I want to build this workshop out of. It's asking me, do you want to build it out of cedar logs? larch logs, or pine logs, because that's all of the resources that I have. If I had stone, I would have the option of building this carpenter's workshop out of stone. It doesn't really matter what kind of stone or wood you build it out of, for the most part. So you can use the plus and minus buttons to choose, I'm going to choose, I guess, cedar logs and hit enter. So now this carpenter's workshop has been queued up. It is not built yet. It requires someone with the carpentry skill to come build it. And uh, if I unpause the game, you'll notice that one of these guys, they'll run over, they'll grab a piece of wood, a, a cedar log from the stockpile, they'll bring it over to the carpenter's workshop, and they'll build the carpenter's workshop. So I hit escape, or excuse me, I hit space bar to unpause the game, grabs a piece of wood, he brings it over, and the workshop is built. So now I pause the game again, I hit Q, and I'm going to move my cursor over to the workshop. When it's close to the workshop, I have, on the right-hand side of the screen, I have the Carpenter's Workshop menu. If I want to build something, I hit A to add a new task. And if I want to build a wheelbarrow, i got to look for that in the menu, because I don't remember the shortcut. <laughs> so I'm just going to go down the menu here. Here we go. There, there's no shortcut. Make Wooden Wheelbarrow. I'm going to hit Enter. And now, they're on this list of tasks for this workshop, there's Make Wooden Wheelbarrow. Let's say I want three wheelbarrows. I'm going to hit A again. Wheelbarrow is already selected, so I hit Enter. A, Enter. And now I have three wheelbarrows queued up to create. If I hit the Escape button and I hit Space to unpause the game, my dwarfs, they'll run over to the stock, well, one of the dwarfs will run over to the stockpile. He'll grab a piece of wood. He'll bring it over to the carpenter's workshop. And then he'll make a wheelbarrow. And then he'll do the same thing. When he's done making the wheelbarrow, he'll go back over, he'll grab another piece of wood, he'll make another wheelbarrow. Now, where is that wheelbarrow? I'm going to pause the game. The wheelbarrow is actually at the carpenter's workshop. It's there, inside the workshop. And the problem is, uh, the more clutter you have in the workshop, the slower the dwarves work. And I think if you have about seven objects cluttering up a workshop, they, the workshops no longer work. So what I need is I need a place to put the wheelbarrow. So I'm going to create a furniture stockpile. So I'm going to hit P for stockpile. And uh, furniture is U. So I hit U. And I'm going to create a stockpile over here for furniture items. OK. And I'm going to hit Escape, hit Space to unpause the game. And my dwarfs, they're going to run to my caravan to get the items that are in there that are furniture. And they're going to run, OK, that guy, <laughs> things happen so fast. This guy right here, he went and grabbed the wheelbarrow from the workshop, and he brought it over to the stockpile. So thanks, man. Um, quick explanation. Uh, again, these symbols, they're hard to read what they all are. Uh, after a while, you just kind of get it. This, uh, this circle with the two handles on top, that is a wheelbarrow. The U with the uh, accent, that is a bucket. These circles with arrows, those are, uh, those are bags. And uh, this circle with the line on top, I believe that's an anvil. So I believe you bring an anvil with you for, to create your uh, metal smith forge. Actually, this guy up here, he also has a wheelbarrow. OK, so back to the game. Um, I'm going to go down into my fortress, and I'm going to designate uh, more digging and more things, more rooms for them to build. So I want to dig a mine shaft down, down, down until I get to the rock. And uh, what I'm going to do is find the top of the rock that I can see right here. So just beneath these stairs, I can see the top of the next layer of rock. 
I'm going to hit D for designation, I for an up down stairway, and I'm going to put my cursor in one corner and hit enter. Now you could go and put your cursor in this other corner and hit enter again, and you would dig out four up down staircases. The really cool thing about these designations though is that they don't have to be two dimensional. When you're defining the two corners of this box, it doesn't have to be a two-dimensional rectangle, it can be a three-dimensional box. So if I go down, 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 if I keep hitting greater than, and then I hit enter, I've just defined a three-dimensional box of stairs, basically a shaft of stairs going down into the rock. So uh, if I unpause the game, they'll dig down those stairs. I also want to dig out some more rooms. So I'm going to dig out a meeting area here across from the, uh, the farms. So I'm going to hit D for mine, hit enter twice to build a, a doorway there. And then I'll create a room that is about, I don't know, six by six or so. One of the, one of the difficult things with this game is by default, the tiles in the game are not square. They are rectangle. So when your rooms are square, they don't look square. That can be very frustrating. I'm going to unpause the game, and I'm going to watch my dwarfs. This guy's still planting seeds. My other dwarfs, they are digging. Oh, there's some rock. They're digging into the rock. Uh, these guys, he's hauling furniture around. Uh, they all tend to keep busy. Actually, now that I'm digging into rock, you'll notice that uh, some of the guys, they're going down with a wheelbarrow, and they're bringing rock up, and they're putting it in the stockpile. Ooh, I found gold and tetrahedrite. There's all kinds of ores in this game. Oh my goodness, I did not go down very far, but my dwarfs have discovered an expansive cavern deep underground. Press enter to close window. So that's kind of interesting. Um, usually I, I go down about 50 units or so and you'll come into a huge cavern that you'll find and your dwarfs can then go explore it. Um, in this case, this cavern is basically full of water. It has a lot of water over here. Um, oh, here's some land over here. And you'll notice that there are trees and mushrooms growing inside the cavern. Uh, there are spider webs, I see. Um, and of course, there can be horrible things living in the caverns as well. So what I probably want to do is I want to stop digging down these staircases because at some point I might accidentally get a dwarf that drowns himself. Uh, I will dig down to here and then that's it. So I want to hit designation and X for cancel. I'm going to cancel digging there and uh, basically keep going down. No, the other way, down. There we go. And cancel all of that. So they will dig down to this level and then if I want to explore the cave, we'll have them dig a tunnel over here and uh, we'll explore this cave. Not that cave exploring was really my goal, but there we go. All right, um, if you want to get back easily to your trade caravan, F1 is the shortcut, not your trade caravan, your caravan where you started. F1 takes you back up, and you can change those hotkeys if you want. Now, you're probably feeling overwhelmed at this point by how much there is to know, and uh, the truth is we've only really hit the tip of the iceberg too. Uh, in order to play this game successfully, you really do need access to the uh, to a wiki. And fortunately, this game has a wiki. I like to do a Google search for Dwarf Fortress Wiki, um, but it's called, well, I guess, DwarfFortressWiki.org. And you can look up all kinds of information on here. So for example, if you're mining uh, different kinds of ore and you want to know what on earth limonite is or tetrahedrite is, you can look that up in the wiki. Um, I'll do exactly that. I'm going to look up tetrahedrite. Tetrahedrite. And uh, it says that tetrahedrite is an incredibly common ore. And if you melt it down, it gives you a chance of uh, getting copper and get, or getting silver. Uh, it looks like you get copper. Otherwise, you have a 20% chance of tetrahedrite smelting down and giving you uh, silver. So 80% of the time it's copper. That's pretty cool. I also believe I found some, uh, some gold when I was digging, which I can melt down to get golden bars. That's pretty sweet. Uh, back in my game, 
All right, I'm going to unpause the game so that my guys can keep digging. I believe they finished digging the mine shaft, so now these guys, uh, they're digging out this room over here. And uh, this room, I'm going to... I'm going to create a meeting area in this room. So right now, when dwarfs don't do anything, they go up and they hang out by the caravan where they came in. What I'm going to do is give them an area to hang out. I'm going to put eventually put tables and chairs in there, and they can eat food and stuff. And that'll make them happier than just sitting outside in the cold. So I'm going to, uh, I want to create a zone. So I'm going to hit I for zones. And what I'm going to do is basically do the same thing where I draw out a rectangle. So I'm going to put my cursor in one corner of the room, hit Enter, move my cursor into the other corner of the room, and hit Enter. And now with my cursor over this zone, I am going to say that this zone is a meeting area. So to do that, I hit M, and now meeting area is selected. If I hit Escape, uh, the zone itself actually disappears, but it's still there. Cool. So if I unpause the game, any dwarfs that aren't doing anything, they'll come hang out in this meeting area. Now, uh, the food is still being stored out in the, uh, the caravan. So when these dwarfs uh, get hungry or thirsty, they go out to the caravan to eat and drink. Oh, my goodness, all seven dwarfs are hanging out here. Not only that, but the horses are coming down and hanging out in the meeting area. And that's, uh, that's okay, but the horses, uh, any animals are eventually going to starve underground because there's no food for them to graze on. So maybe I want to create a pasture outside. Basically, a pasture is like a meeting area for animals. Um, it, it works especially well if you have animals that are tamed, like our horses. Uh, but if you want to, you could create fences or walls. You could fence in your pasture, pastures. I'm going to go up to the surface, and I will create an area uh, south of my caravan that, I, that I'll deem as a pasture. So I'm going to hit I for zones, and I'm going to draw out just a big rectangle. When the snow melts, there's going to be lots of grass and stuff and bushes for my horses to eat in this area, and that'll be just fine. So with this big zone selected, I'm going to hit N for pen slash pasture. And uh, I'm going to hit capital N after setting it to a pen pasture to pull up the pen pasture information. And I have two animals uh, that are tame. I have, a stray, I have two stray horses. And what I can do is hit enter. And what it'll do is it'll take that stray horse and it will assign that horse to this pasture. If I go down my menu by hitting the plus sign and I select the other horse, I hit enter, both horses will be assigned to this pasture. If I hit escape and uh, escape again and I unpause the game, you'll notice that the horses, they will come out of the meeting area and they'll, they should, actually they will be led by some dwarfs out of the meeting area and they will be led down into the pasture. There we go. See these two dwarfs, they are, there we go. <laughs> they just pulled the horses outside and they say, horses, you stay outside. Oh my goodness, a snowstorm has come. If, uh, if there are events happening in, in your game, you can hit A to view the announcement screen. On the announcement screen, I can see what kinds of ores I've struck. I can see uh, all kinds of things. In this case, I can see that uh, a snowstorm has come. That probably means I want to get inside. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what all a snowstorm means. I'm actually going to build a food stockpile but to prevent wild animals and, and monsters from stealing my food, I'm going to put my food stockpile downstairs. So next to my meeting area, which is kind of be, going to be like a, a food hall anyway, I'm going to dig out a room, and I'm going to designate that as a food stockpile. In addition, I'm going to dig out another room, and I'm going to build something called a trade depot. And a trade depot is uh, when... To do. Sorry, I lost my train of thought. When, uh, when trade caravans show up at your fortress, as they do a couple times a year, if you have a trade depot, you can trade with them and make money, get more resources, all kinds of stuff. So I believe a trade depot takes up 5x5. Five five. So I've got to make my room 5x5. Five five. So I'll put my cursor here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and hit Enter. And I dig a room into that space. And I unpause the game. My dwarfs go back to mining. Excellent. Okay, so I have room for a trade depot, and uh, I also have room now for my stockpile of food. So I'm going to build the food stockpile, hit P, 
and hit F for food and designate a rectangle for food. These guys, they'll run outside to the caravan, they'll get all the food barrels and bags and they'll bring them all inside. And then I'm going to hit escape, I'm going to hit B for building, and then capital D, that shift D, for trade depot. And there we go. I have just enough room. I'm going to put the trade depot in this room, hit enter. I have to tell the, I tell the game which items to build it out of. So I can build it out of wood or I can build it out of rock. Um, wood is, I think, more precious than rock in this game. So I'm going to go down and choose a kind of rock, like granite, siltstone, diorite. I'll choose granite. And I actually need three pieces uh, of something, of material, to build this. So I'm going to hit enter uh, for granite. And uh, I think I've used my only piece of granite, so i got to build it out of other things. So I'm going to build uh, out of diorite. There we go. Two pieces of diorite, one piece of granite. So now if you look into that room, there's a bunch of stuff lying around where construction should begin shortly on the trade depot. But if I unpause the game, uh, these guys, they all run outside, but they're all just going and grabbing food. Uh, after they move all the food inside, nobody's going to start construction on that trade depot. And that's because they don't have the necessary job to do so. Just like earlier, excuse me, just like earlier I needed someone with a farming job to come build the farm, I need someone with a specific job to come build the trade depot. Well, if you don't know what job that is, you can hit Q, that's your building info, and put your cursor by the trade depot that's about to be built, and it says needs architecture, construction inactive. So I need a dwarf with the architecture job to come build this thing. So what I can do is I can select one of my dwarfs and give him the architecture job. The thing is, there are so many jobs in this game that it gets very tedious telling all of your dwarfs specifically what they can and can't do using the, the V menu. Uh, it's not so bad when you only have seven dwarfs, but eventually you get immigrants. You can get to the point where you have hundreds of dwarfs living in your fortress. So what we need is we need a different program to help us. And remember, we downloaded a program called Dwarf Therapist. I'm going to go and run Dwarf Therapist by just running dwarftherapist.exe. And it launches this program. The program pops up a message. I say, OK. If you have Dwarf Fortress running, Dwarf Therapist finds it running in your computer's memory and it pulls up your seven dwarfs. So I've got these seven dwarfs here. And on this grid, I can see the little dots on these skills tell me, or tell me that the dwarfs have the skills. Okay, So over here, I can see that uh, I have three dwarfs with the mining skill. And I have three dwarfs with the carpentry skill, three dwarfs with the masonry skill. But you, you'll notice that these jobs, they can also be uh, clicked on and turn blue. And what that is is that we'll tell that dwarf to do that job even if they don't have the skill to do so. So for example, if I want all of my dwarfs to do farming, if the farming job comes up, I can go down this list and click on each dwarf so that each of these cells turns blue. I, I assume that's blue. I'm colorblind. Um, Likewise, if I want a dwarf to do architecture, I'm going to find architecture all the way on the right, okay? And I'm going to find a dwarf who isn't doing anything. Maybe he doesn't do very much. Like my this guy, Onul, this guy that I gave, um, I gave him skill, I gave him social skills in appraising, leading, organizing, uh, and record keeping. What I'm going to do is give him the architecture skill because he's not doing much anyway. So if I find architecture over here, I click on that. Okay, and now he is assigned to do architecture. This is so much faster than trying to do it in the game. Now, if you go back into the game, the, nothing has changed. You actually have to come over here and click on Commit Changes. After you click on Commit Changes, everything in the game has been updated. Now, if I unpause the game, my, my one guy, once he uh, decides to, there you go. Here he is. Oh, oh! I, I, he went to go get the logs he needs, I think. <laughs> They're still bringing in food. To you, dude. I know it's you. 
Okay, okay, not logs, building out of stone. So he's, uh, he brought in one piece of stone. He just went to go get the other piece of stone. And uh, he's going to bring in three pieces of stone, and then he's going to build this thing. So dwarf therapist is a, is a very helpful way for us to see what our, each of our dwarfs are doing at a glance and then control what they're all doing. Uh, okay, so this guy with the architecture skill, he finished he finished being an architect for this, and then a dwarf with masonry went in to finish the job. And uh, there we go. The trade depot is finished being built. Now, when you're playing this game, it's going to be really rough uh, at first. Eventually, you want to get it so that very few of your dwarfs are being idle. Right now, I have seven dwarfs sitting around doing nothing. And as they're doing nothing, they're, you know, they're getting hungry, they're getting thirsty, they're eating, they're eating the food, they're drinking the drink, and they're not, if they're not doing anything, we're not being productive. And eventually, uh, enemies show up, we get attacked, uh, bad things eventually happen. And I want to make sure that my, my fortress is, is as far along as it can be. So really, as you play this game, if you look in the upper right-hand corner, I have seven idlers right now, that's seven dwarfs not doing anything. You want to give so many jobs that all of your dwarfs are always busy doing things, unless they get hungry, thirsty, or they want to go take a nap. Um, on the note of taking a nap, we should probably build some rooms for these guys. Uh, I'm going to do it on this layer of the world because uh, it's clay, and I can dig in clay really quickly. So I'm going to build a doorway, a hallway, outside of the back of the meeting hall. And uh, down this hallway, I'm just going to designate some rooms to be built. So the rooms have to have some doorways into them. And I like to make my rooms do not, do, do not go larger than you need to on the rooms. It's a, it's a classic mistake when you're playing Dwarf Fortress to make the rooms huge. And there is no point in making them huge. Uh, I like to make my rooms three by three. Now I have seven dwarfs. It would make sense if I had seven rooms so that they each had a place to stay. And if they each have their own room, that'll actually make them happier in the long run, which is good. So I'm just uh, digging these out. Now, you might, if you have time, you might want to build dozens of rooms because you're going to need them anyway. You're going to need them not only for bedrooms but for other things and eventually when immigrants show up you're going to need more bedrooms as well. So I'm going to unpause the game. I was only able to fit in 10 rooms here. My, my, the design of my fortress is really kind of weird anyway but that's okay. Uh, if I unpause the game, my miners, they start digging and uh, before we know it we're going to have some rooms. Now I'm going to pause the game because while they're digging I should start building beds and, and doors for these rooms. So I'm going to go up one level. I have a carpenter station uh, where I can do carpentry and I'm going to hit Q. I select the carpenter station by just being close enough to it with your cursor. Hit A to add a new task and then B for bed. And do this uh, so that you queue up seven beds to be made. Just A, B, A, B, A, B. All right, there we go, seven beds. And then I want to build my doors, but I'm going to build my doors out of stone, even though I only have two pieces of stone so far. i got to start a mining operation here at some point. Uh, in order to build things out of stone, we have to build a mason's workshop. We have a carpenter's workshop, but let's build a mason's workshop. We hit B for build, W for workshop, uh, and then M for mason's workshop. I'm going to build it next to the the stone pile. And uh, that's going to take someone with a mason skill to come build. Meanwhile, I need more rock. So I'm going to come down to this level right here. This is, I built my stairs to come all the way down. Oops. I built my stairs to come all the way down here. And I'll just have them dig out some hallways using the designation menu. We'll dig out hallways going this way. And hopefully that'll give us some rock. But uh, my masons are building, are busy building the, the bedrooms anyway. Oh, okay. They quit doing the bedrooms and they went to go dig up rock. Oh, my farmer just, uh, he just picked uh, some crops and he put them in these barrels over here. 
Over here in the, the food storage area, these percent signs, those are barrels, and then these uh, circles are bags. So I've got barrels of food and bags of food. You notice that sometimes the dwarfs, they go into the food room and they get food and they eat it. Or sometimes they get thirsty and they go get some drink. And my mason's workshop is finished, so I'm going to come over here. And with Q, I'm going to hit A to add a new task. And uh, for chair, no, a door, I'm going to hit D. So A, D, A, D. And I want to make sure I queue up seven doors to be built. Four, five, six, seven. Uh, although I don't have seven pieces of rock, so I hope uh, I get more rock in here soon. Now in the furniture stockpile, next to my wheelbarrows, I can see that I currently have five beds already built. So that guy's cranking out those beds, which is awesome. And um, I could probably start putting those in whatever rooms are finished. Yeah, there we go. So I'm going to hit uh, space to pause the game. B for building, and then B for bed. Now, <clears throat> you actually have to build a bed in a workshop before you can build a bed. <laughs> in the building menu, when you choose to build a bed, what you're actually doing is placing a bed you already built. So you build a bed in a workshop. And then in the building menu, you choose to place a bed in the world. The bed has to be in a stockpile, though, in order to place it in the world. So remember, stockpiles are very important. So I'm going to go and put a bed into each one of these rooms. And actually, yeah, I'll put, yeah, sure. Put a bed here. I've got uh, four cedar beds and two large beds. Doesn't matter which. Put a bed there. Hit B again. Come down here. Hit Enter. Hit Enter. B. Enter. Enter. B. Enter. Enter. B. Over here. Enter, 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 enter. There we go. So that is six beds, and once the seventh one gets built, I can place it in another bedroom. And you see these guys are running down here and they're putting the beds in their places. And one more, there we go. And I'm going to see if the seventh one is built. It is, so I'm going to place it right here. There we go. Now, what I can do is, uh, after all the beds are in place, the dwarfs, they're going to come, that guy, that guy right there, he came and he started sleeping. So when they get tired, they're going to come and they're going to sleep in these beds. These beds are free for anyone to use, but the dwarfs, they'll be much happier if you actually say, uh, Dwarf number one, this is your bedroom. Dwarf number two, this is your bedroom. I have three dwarfs sleeping right now. Now I have five dwarfs sleeping. Now I have six. They've been working nonstop since we started building the fortress, so they're all pretty tired. All six of them are sleeping. Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, hit Q for my building menu, and I'm going to move my cursor by a bed. Okay? When my cursor is by a bed, I can choose to hit R to make a bedroom. So I hit R. And it's going to ask me how large I want the bedroom to be. I can use the plus and minus keys to make it larger. And here, you don't actually create a rectangle. It's using logic to basically start at the bed and spill outwards. So uh, I'm going to have uh, the bedroom be this large. Hit Enter. And now it's a bedroom, but it's not assigned to anyone. If I want to give it to a specific dwarf, I hit A. And then I use the plus and minus keys to navigate this menu. And I'm going to give this bed to Imush. There you go, Imush. You have your own bedroom. And I'm going to hit Escape. Or rather, I'm sorry, I'm going to hit Q. Go to another bed. Hit R to make bedroom. Enter. A to assign the bed. And I'm going to give this one to a dwarf, my dwarf called Ilral. I'm going to go down to this bed. Hit R. Hit Enter. Hit A. Give this bed to Rygoth or Rygoth. Go down. R, enter, A. This bed is going to be given to Kogan. Come up here to this bedroom. R, enter, A. 
I have another dwarf named Imush. Give it to him. And uh, Itone. And finally, we give the last bed to Onul. Okay, so each dwarf has their own bedroom, which hopefully will make them happier. Now, they'll be even happier if their bedrooms have doors. So I'm going to hit D, not D, I'm going to hit B for building, D for door, and I'm going to put door, doors in the doorways. So I only have four built so far. I've got three granite doors and one siltstone door. That's fine. I'll place the ones I have. Okay. And I unpause the game, and when the dwarfs... Uh, yeah, we go. We're bringing the doors down. They're putting them in place. Now, if I want to get... Oh, it just became spring. The snow just melted. So now the uh, the outside of the fortress it looks it tends to look a little bit more confusing, but basically what you're seeing is you're seeing a lot of grass, you're seeing a lot of bushes, um, so that's why it's colored like this. Um, if my dwarfs don't have that much food, actually, uh, we can tell them to come up here and pick plants. If I hit D for designation and P for plants, and by the way, we could have done this in the winter too. I'm going to trace out a big rectangle. Actually, I don't want to take from the horse's pasture. And uh, here, I selected five different plants, and uh, any dwarfs with the plant gathering labor will come and they'll pick the plants. Now, I'm just going to go back to Dwarf Therapist, click Read Dwarfs, and uh, none of my dwarfs have the plant gathering labor. So I'm going to come down here and just tell all of them to gather plants. So if the plant gathering job comes up and they're not doing anything else, now they're all they'll, they're all supposed to pick plants. So, click commit changes. Go back to Dwarf Fortress, and uh, we can unpause the game, and we can watch these guys come up here and pick plants, and then they'll take the plants and they'll move them down into the barrels in the in the food storage area. Now, if I want a clearer idea of how much I have of any resource, I can hit Z to go into my status menu. The problem is, is that uh, I, I really can't know how much I have because none of my dwarfs have actually been counting. Uh, what I need is, uh, is I need someone with the appraisal skill uh, to be a broker. And uh, I need uh, someone else, I believe, to be an organizer. Excuse me, a bookkeeper. If I have a bookkeeper, I can know exactly how much I have of any food, of any stone, of uh, anything. So what I need to do is give someone a specific uh, job, a specific title. And remember, I created a leader that had those skills. I'm going to hit N, and that's going to bring me to the Nobles and Administrators menu. Eventually, you might have a king or queen show up, and they might start requiring or demanding that you do things their way. Um, but in any case, I have a, an, an expedition leader that was um, assigned to Imush. I'm not entirely sure why. But I'm going to go down to Bookkeeper, and I'm going to hit Enter. And I'm going to find the guy with the relevant skills. And remember my dwarf, Onal, if you look on the right, it says he's a novice record keeper. He would be a good guy for bookkeeping. Uh, so I'm going to hit Enter to select him. And notice that... Uh, next to his name now, or he is he is now assigned as the bookkeeper of our fortress, but the require is red. And what that means is he requires something to do his job that he doesn't currently have. If I hit enter, I can see that he doesn't have an office. He needs an office in order to do his bookkeeping job. So I believe all you really need in an office is a chair. But I'm going to give him a chair and, and a table. So... I'm also going to assign him as our broker, so I'm going to go up to broker, hit enter, uh, select Onal, hit enter, and same thing, he needs, a, he needs an office. So I'm going to hit escape, and I'm going to go up to my 
mason or my carpenter's workshop and add new task and I'm gonna hit C for chair and uh, sure I'll give him a table I'm gonna go over to my mason's workshop and I'm, I'm in the Q menu by the way hit A for add a new task and then uh, T for table if I look in my, in my furniture stockpile I see that there are three doors in there so meanwhile I can come down here and uh, hit B for build, D for door, and I can give these rooms doors. D for door, enter, enter, D for door, enter, enter. And I'm going to use one of these rooms that are empty, I'm going to use as the office for Ono. So as soon as that chair gets built, we can uh, give him an office. Resume the game. Now, uh, one of the most important things you can do for your dwarfs is uh, give them uh, alcohol to drink. They, they will be um, much less happy if they're drinking water. Uh, so we brought alcohol with us, so our dwarfs are they're pretty good right now. But uh, what we should probably build is we should probably build a still and uh, have someone start brewing alcohol. So I'm going to pause the game, and you could dig out a room. I'm going to dig out a room next to my, my food and alcohol storage room and that's, that's bigger than it needs to be but I'm gonna build a still in there maybe I'll build some other stuff too oh it's already dug out um, I'm gonna hit space I'm gonna hit B for build W for workshop and it might not be in workshops it might be in workshops I don't know <laughs> uh, maybe I missed it other works, clothier, lawyer, carpenter, tanner, siege, mechanic. Still, there it is. L is the shortcut. So I'm going to build a still. And uh, I don't know, I guess I'll build it right here. And I will build it out of granite. And I'm going to hit Q. And let's see, it needs brewing or plant gathering skill. Well, fortunately, all my dwarfs have the plant gathering. Although, in order to actually brew, at least one of them is going to need the brewing job. So, I'm going to come in here and find brewing. And I'll give, uh, I don't know, I'll give, I'll give all of them the job of brewing. So, if they're not busy, anybody can brew alcohol. Commit changes. Okay. Back in Dwarf Fortress, we can unpause the game. Meanwhile, I probably want more mining because I probably want to start creating more metal. And I need more rock as well, so. Ooh, what is that? Is that a dog? A dingo. There's a dingo out here. Oh, and honeybees. Interesting. Actually, uh, your dwarfs can't have skills in beekeeping. It could be interesting. You can make honey and wax and all kinds of stuff that you can then sell. There's another beehive down here. Uh, anyway. Uh, all right, we should probably start talking about fuel. Uh, a lot of what you're going to do in this game uh, could be uh, smelting down or in order to get metal. Uh, you need, then you can use the metal to build things like traps and cages and weapons and armor, uh, siege components, uh, all kinds of things. So what we need is we need a furnace. Okay, So I'm going to build a furnace up here. Um, B for building and E for furnace. Notice that we can build a wood furnace, a smelter, a glass furnace, a kiln. There's even You can even build a magma furnace if you have magma on your map. 
I'm going to choose to build a wood furnace, and I'll explain why in a minute. And I'll just, I don't know, I'll just put it up here. And then I will also build a smelter, which is like a furnace where you melt down metal. And uh, I'm going to need dwarfs that have the furnace skill. So where is that? Furnace operating. I'm just going to give that ability to everyone. Um, and then in addition to furnace operating, there's... wood burning. If you want someone to burn wood in the wood furnace, you actually need the wood burning skill. So I'm going to give that to everyone as well. Commit changes. Go back to Dwarf Fortress. Now, uh, in this game, there are two kinds of fuel. There is uh, coke and there is charcoal. Okay? Um, you can melt down, excuse me, you can burn wood to get charcoal and you can melt down all kinds of ore um, to get coke. Okay, so one of the things you might mine is you might mine something called uh, bituminous coal. Okay, now coal is not yet fuel until after it has been burned in a furnace. So if you get coal or you get, uh, I believe lignite is another one. Uh, these you put in a furnace and and then you you burn them and then after burning them then you get coke out of them okay and then the coke is the fuel that you can then turn around and use to uh, melt down uh, more ore to get metal now I haven't been doing a lot of mining yet in this game my two furnaces are built what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit Q and I'm gonna go to my wood furnace I don't have any fuel so far I don't have any coke I don't have any charcoal because I didn't bring any of that with me so I'm going to burn some wood to get charcoal, and then from the burned wood, I can create the coke if I have any coal. So uh, needs masonry. That's not built. Neither of these are built. Okay, all my masons are busy digging right now, so I guess we're going to have to wait on that. Oh, the still is done being built. I'm going to have them brew up some alcohol. So with the still, I can select it with Q, hit A, and uh, hit B to brew a drink. And you can brew a bunch of them. Now, some parts in this game ask for a lot of specificity, and other parts don't ask for very much at all. So here, it's not asking you which plants you want to brew for a drink. Uh, the dwarf is just going to go grab a plant and brew it. Now, this could actually be a bad thing, because you could end up brewing all your food away. Uh, plump helmets are food but they're also used to brew drinks. So uh, it can be kind of careful. You want to actually check your status in the Z menu. And one of the things you can do is in if you go into the kitchen section, you can choose specific kinds of things, like plump helmets, for example. And you can choose whether you give the dwarfs permission to use it only for cooking, only for brewing, or for both. So for example, if I want my plump helmets to be used only for cooking, I could come down here and I could disable brewing on them. Okay, or vice versa. Uh, you can do the same thing with rock. There's all kinds of rock. If you look in this rock menu, uh, all of these rocks are considered economic stone. You can use them. Limestone, dolomite, chalk, obsidian, marble, hematite, limonite, uh, Garnierite, gold nuggets, silver nuggets, copper nuggets, malachite. Now, you probably don't want to do things like build walls out of uh, gold nuggets because you probably want to melt those down and get gold. Uh, for example, galena. You might, you might accidentally build a wall out of galena, uh, but galena can be used, you can melt it down to get silver or lead. So there's all kinds of rock. It's ridiculous how much rock there is. You're going to want to get on the wiki and, and, uh, and check to see what kind of rock we're working with here. Uh, and then there's all kinds of other stone that is not considered economic. There's sandstone, siltstone, mudstone, shale, claystone, rock salt, conglomerate, uh, I don't even know all these, granite, gabbro, basalt, um, talc, okay. So it's kind of up to you to figure out exactly what you want to use here. Now. One of the cool things that I did in my last playthrough was uh, 
I was doing a lot more mining and I came across all kinds of ore that I was able to smelt down into iron. And the cool thing is once you have iron, you can throw iron in the smelter again with more ore and create pig iron. And then you can throw the pig iron in the smelter with more ore and that's how you create steel. And then I had a metal forge with the anvil and then from the steel I was able to create uh, a metal, I created a steel hammer and I created a, uh, a sword made out of iron and then you can create a squad and you can equip all of your dwarves so that they're ready for combat. So there is a lot you can do in this game. Uh, my bookkeeper is still not able to do his job because he doesn't have his office. So I'm going to give him his office because I believe I have a chair made now. And uh, a, yes, I do. I have a chair and a table made. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to say build uh, C for chair. I'm going to position it in this room. And uh, in front of the chair, I'm going to put T, a table, that he can do his work on. And then if I unpause the game, whoever's not busy is going to go grab the furniture and move it into the room. And uh, I just got a message saying that that uh, the guy who was brewing the drink canceled brewing the drink because apparently I don't have enough barrels to store any drink in. So all of our barrels are full of food, so I should probably build some more barrels. So if I go up to the surface, I can go to my carpenter's workshop I can hit A and then V to build a barrel. And I'll just build three barrels. And uh, when my dwarfs get time, they'll go build some barrels. Ah, uh, that guy's building the wood furnace. That's good. I'm going to hit Q. And with the wood furnace, I'm going to say add new task. And I'm going to hit C for make charcoal. You can also choose to make ash, which I believe is an you can use for fertilizer or you can use it to create lye uh, to make soap. Uh, soap is important if you're going to, well, soap's important for your surgeon. Uh, if you create a chief medical dwarf, you need to create a hospital area and uh, create, have soap on hand, water, splints, crutches, all kinds of things. Because uh, the dwarfs, they, they do tend to injure themselves. So I got the one dwarf, he's making some charcoal. And the other is finishing up the smelter. There we go. Okay, I think I don't have a stockpile for, yeah, I don't have a stockpile for, for uh, melted down metal or fuel. So all the fuel is being uh, left at the wood furnace. I'm going to hit space to pause the game, P for stockpile. And uh, that kind of stockpile is B, bar slash block. Okay, and uh, I don't know where to put it. There's not a ton of room. Well, I'm not going to be smelting a lot of stuff this particular game, so I could squeeze it in right here. Or I guess I could put it over here. Now, eventually, you may want to wrap your entire uh, fortress area in walls. Uh, there we go. That guy, he just dragged the, uh, the charcoal over here to the st stockpile. You may want to put walls up around your fortress because Eventually, you'll be attacked by something, uh, and having a good defense is pretty important. Um, or, and or, you might want to move everything underground. So, uh, to build a wall, you would actually go, you'd hit B for building, and then you would actually, down at the bottom, there's an option for wall slash floor slash stairs slash track. It's capital C. So hit uh, shift C, and then a wall is W. Now, you actually use the UMKH keys when building a wall. So if I want to build a wall, let's say on the right side over here, I'm going to use the M or the U key to make my wall taller. And I can only make it 10 units tall. And I can't build it where there are any trees. So right here I could build it. Um, if I hit Enter, I now have to choose 10 materials to build this wall out of because it's 10 units tall. Well, not tall vertically, but 10 units long. Uh, so, for example, I could build this wall out of wood, wooden logs, I could build it out of granite, 
I have 38 pieces of granite, apparently, so that would not be a bad idea. So I'm going to come down here to granite, and I'm going to hit enter 10 times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And now that wall is not built, but it's queued up to be built. Someone with the masonry skill has to come build it. So if I unpause my game, if any dwarf is not busy, he'll grab some stone, and he'll run over to the wall. Actually, there are two dwarfs, three dwarfs now, uh, working on building that wall. Now, if you want to build a, a much bigger wall, you just have to build more wall segments next to each other. So, for example, if I hit B for build and a capital C and W for wall, I can come down here and um, let's say I want to extend the wall by four. I hit enter, I choose granite, hit enter four times, for, and then hit escape. Um, actually, no, I'm going to hit uh, capital C again, W for wall. I want the wall to make a 90 degree turn, so I'm going to hit uh, K a bunch of times to make it go this way. And I'm also going to build those out of granite. Now if I unpause my game, the dwarfs will go at it. Now they're working kind of slowly. Um, I, I have three dwarfs idling. I don't know if they're sleeping or eating or what, but what I'm going to do actually is uh, go into Dwarf Therapist. And can I give them all the masonry skill? Yes, I can. I'm going to give all of them the masonry skill. And then those that aren't busy should come help build the wall. Make sure you hit commit. Yeah. And uh, then resume the game. And they'll all help build the wall. Now, what does skill matter? If, if you can tell any dwarf to do any task, uh, what does skill actually matter? Well, uh, a dwarf that has more skill is going to do a particular job much faster. And he may do a much better job of doing it, too. So, for example, if a dwarf is, uh, let's say, building armor or building weapons, um, he might, if, he, if he's low skill, he might build a really crappy weapon. And the, rap, the weapon might break in combat. If he builds, if, he has, if he's high skill, he might actually build a, a mythic or like a really rare legendary weapon and uh, when the weapon might do a ridiculous amount of combat damage. So, um, you know, skill is still important. Now, as the dwarves do these jobs that they're initially not skilled in, they actually gain the skill over time. So the more they practice, the more they practice, the more skill they have. Okay, I just wanted to check the requirements of the assignment, make sure I covered as much as possible. Um, one thing I noticed is I do have an error. I, I, I tell you to start uh, the, your homework assignment with a short amount of history so that you start in the year 126. Um, and then I want your fortress to be at least one year old when you turn it in, which would actually make it 127, uh, not 252. But you know what? I, I actually, I'm going to take those, those, that first requirement out. I don't care how much history you start with. I just want your fortress to be at least one year old um, when you turn it in to me. So that's all fine and good. Now, uh, I've showed you how to build walls, how to build a trade depot, how to name your fortress, uh, basic, how to play, how to dig a mine shaft all the way down to a cavern. You might have to go down 50 units uh, or 60 units and then dig sideways. Uh, I've shown you how to build a farm. I've shown you how to smelt. Uh, well, I haven't really shown you how to smelt. So let's, uh, let's look at smelting. I'm going to, now that I have uh, fuel over here in this stockpile. I'm going to hit Q and go to my smelter. And I'm going to say add new task. And all the, re all the red tasks over here are tasks that we can't do because we don't have that kind of ore. Okay. But we have uh, billin bars. I, I, I don't know how to pronounce that. Billin. Yeah. We have billin ore. And we have tetrahedrite ore. Um, I believe, uh, we looked it up earlier, tetrahedrite is sometimes silver, sometimes iron. So I'm, I, I really wish the game told you right here how much ore you have, but I'm going to smelt down this tetrahedrite ore that I have in my stone stockpile. When it's done smelting, uh, I'm going to have it do it several times. When it's done smelting, that ore uh, will be probably, I think, moved over into the, this bar block stockpile we created.
So, yep, they're doing the smelting, and uh, I think that's pretty straightforward, actually. Um, like I said earlier, if you if you smelt something and you get iron, you can smelt it again to make pig iron, and then again to make steel. Uh, oh, apparently I don't have that much tetrahedrite. The game, the game lets you uh, do a task more than once, and then just says, sorry, you don't have tetrahedrite. So, if I pause the game, and I hit K, and I look over here, it looks like I got uh, four pieces of iron. Oh, copper. That's right, copper. I have four copper bars, and I got lucky ones. I got silver as well. So I got silver bars, and that's pretty sweet. Um, so that's how you smelt metal down, and, and you put it uh, in a stockpile. Like I said earlier, you probably want to consider then going into workshops and choosing to build a metal smith's forge with F. Uh, i got to find a place to put that. I think I can fit it right here. Yeah, put it right here. And it takes an iron anvil to build. And you brought, you probably brought an iron anvil with you. I can see mine in my furniture stockpile. And then it's also going to take another kind of material. So I'll build mine out of granite. And if I unpause the game, uh, actually, what skill does that take? It takes any metalsmithing skill. I'm going to check my dwarf therapist. Any metalsmithing skill. Where are those? So that would be metal crafting, blacksmithing, armoring, uh, or weaponsmithing. And it doesn't look like anyone has any of those skills. So what I'm going to do is, uh, I don't know, I wish there was a, a single dwarf that was getting good at this stuff. Uh, actually, I'm going to choose one of my guys who's a carpenter because they don't, I'm not chopping down trees that much. And I'm going to give him skills in all of them, weaponsmithing, armoring, blacksmithing, and metal crafting. Um, in time, if he keeps practicing, he may turn into my fortress's uh, blacksmith. Commit changes, and then go back to Dwarf Fortress, and unpause the game. And as soon as he's not busy, hopefully, he'll come up and grab that anvil. He, there we go. He grabbed a piece of granite, he grabbed the anvil, and now he's building the, yeah, the metalsmith forge. So now that that's finished, if I hold down, or if I hit Q and I go to it and I hit A to add a task, you can build weapons, armor, furniture, siege equipment, trap components, other objects, and, or even metal clothing. Uh, I believe like armor and no, that, um, metal clothing. That's not armor. I'm gonna hit W for weapons, and uh, just because I'm feeling silly, I'm gonna build uh, a weapon out of that silver bar that I have. So I'm gonna choose silver. And then I can choose to build a silver mace, spear, short sword, war hammer, battle axe, or bolts. Um, I'm going to choose to build a silver battle axe. And uh, now when I resume the game, that guy, hopefully, when he, there we, yeah, okay. So that guy, he just went and he grabbed some fuel and he grabbed that uh, silver. And he's working on it right now. Now when he's finished, we don't have a stockpile for armor and weapons, so it's just going to remain there. But yeah, he's finished. I pause the game. I'm going to create a stockpile. And uh, we can create a stockpile just for weapons or just for armor. Uh, but what if I want a stockpile for just everything else? Well, you can actually create a custom stockpile that stores whatever you want. If I hit C for custom stockpile, I can then hit T for custom stockpile settings. And I can go through this menu to choose exactly what I want in that stockpile. So I can choose, uh, I want a stockpile for weapons and trap components. I have to hit E. And then all these subcategories I can turn on or off. I want armor in this one. I want finished goods, gems, leather, cloth. That's a lot of stuff. Ammo and coins, let's say. So now when I unpause the game, there's actually a bunch of stuff that was left uh, in my caravan. Oh, I didn't actually create the stockpile. Uh, P. C, T, there we go. I gotta create it now. Come over here and I'm gonna create a big stockpile for all that stuff. So now uh, all, the, all the extra stuff I brought in my caravan, I think except for cloth, I don't know if I chose cloth or not, it's all gonna be moved into this new stockpile. Bunch of stuff. See there are traction tables. Um, I think those are armor stands. I see thread and needle cabinets, all kinds of stuff. 
And then actually that slash in the upper right hand corner, that is the sword I just created. Or excuse me, the battle axe I just created, right? There, the silver battle axe. That's pretty sweet. Now, uh, I think one of the last things in your homework I asked you to do is try to create a working drawbridge. A working drawbridge uh, is pretty sweet. Uh, you don't actually have to, I, I believe you don't have to ha build it over top of uh, any sort of hole or anything like that. So I'm going to hit B and uh, I'm going to look for drawbridge in here. I don't remember if it's in here or not. Oh, bridge. There we go. G for bridge. Now, the cool thing with a bridge is you can choose its width and its length using the UMHK keys. So, for example, I could put a draw bridge if there wasn't a tree in the way. Well, here, I'll make it narrower. There. I have a 3 by 4 draw bridge. Uh, right now, the, the bridge is set to be a bridge that retracts instead of raises. Uh, if I want a draw bridge that raises, I can use the W, A, D, X, or S key to change what it does. So if I hit W, it now raises in the north direction. Now, why is that at all important? Well, you can actually do some ridiculously fun stuff with draw bridges. For example, if enemies are on the bridges, when you, when you have them draw up, uh, they will be launched in the air. Uh, or if enemies are beneath the bridge, when you lower it, they will be smashed to smithereens. Uh, you can do a lot of fun stuff with bridges. I'm going to have it raise in, in uh, the north direction. And uh, then I will hit enter to place it. And I need f four items to build it out of. Luckily, I still have 15 pieces of granite. So I will build it one, two, three, four. And someone will go build that drawbridge. Now, just because I have a drawbridge does not mean it works yet. OK. Um, I was going to actually, what do we need to build it? I think you need uh, architecture. And one of my guys does have architecture. Q. And yeah, it needs architecture. OK. So he, and I have my architect. He's currently pulling over the four pieces of stone that he needs. I don't know why he just doesn't use the wheelbarrows, because the wheelbarrows are right there. Um, but whatever. Oh, it started raining. I don't know if you guys can see it on my screen, but there are little raindrops on the screen. OK, I skipped ahead a little bit. You'll notice I have a bridge built now. I have a little bit more a wall on the other side. People can walk over the bridge. I have uh, I've actually smelted, uh, I've burned more wood to create more charcoal so that I could use the charcoal to uh, heat up the metalsmith's forge to create uh, three mechanisms because you need one mechanism for the lever, and you need uh, other mechanisms to actually attach the lever to the bridge. Hopefully, three is enough. I'm going to hit B for build now. And uh, in this list, I'm going to find traps slash levers, capital T. I will then find lever, lowercase l. And I'm going to try to position it by the bridge. And I think the closer it is to the bridge, the better luck you're going to have. Uh, I need to use one copper mechanism to build it. So, yep, copper mechanism. And then if I unpause the game, one of my dwarfs will go grab the copper mechanism. He'll bring it over to where I told him to create the lever. And now the lever is built. Now the lever isn't attached to the bridge, so hit Q, go to the lever, hit A, hit B to link up to a bridge. And uh, it, it has chosen the closest bridge. And so hit Enter. And then it's asking you which copper mechanisms you want to use to link it up. So hit Enter, Enter, because you need two additional mechanisms to link the, the lever to the bridge. And uh, now, if I unpause the game, the dwarf will go grab those mechanisms and bring them over to the lever, and he'll connect the lever up to the bridge. Now, there, in addition to bridges, um, there are so many more things you can build in this game. You can build windmills, uh, water pumps, uh, all kinds of things, you know, floodgates. Uh, there we go. So the lever is now built. I'm going to test it. I'm going to hit Q to bring my cursor over to the lever. I'm going to hit A to add a new task. And then capital P if I just want someone to come over and pull the lever. So now I'm going to resume the game. And a dwarf will run over. He'll pull the lever. 
and the drawbridge goes up and no one can get in my fortress anymore. Unless, in this case, they actually go around the walls. All right, a couple more things. When you are done playing Dwarf Fortress and you are ready to save your game, uh, or you just want to take a break and you want to save it, of course you hit escape. If you choose Abandon the Fortress, it will delete your game. So, don't choose that. You're going to want to go up to Save Game. If you choose Save Game, you're going to have to wait um, a couple seconds while the game actually saves it out to disk. And there you go. You can choose Continue Playing to, to continue playing one of your Dwarf Fortress saves. However, when you're ready to turn it in, you are going to go to your Dwarf Fortress folder, go to the Data folder, and in there, there is a Save folder, and your game will be one of the folders in here. It won't be current. It will be probably Region 1. If you've created multiple Dwarf Fortresses, if you've played the game more than once, you might have more than one region in here. So if you're turning in your third playthrough, you'd be turning in Region 3. If you're turning in your first playthrough, it'd be Region 1. What you're going to do is you're going to want to zip up this folder and turn it in on Blackboard. Uh, you should be able to right-click and say uh, Add Archive, Zip, or Compress. It depends on what you have installed on your computer. For me, I have WinRAR installed, so I just go Add to Archive. And I'm going to save it as a zip file, say OK. There is region1.zip. So I think this is everything I, I really wanted to show you guys today. I know this video on the one hand is very long. On the other hand, I'm not covering very much of Dwarf Fortress at all. Uh, there's an incredible amount more here. Uh, we haven't talked about combat at all. We haven't uh, uh, talked, obviously, about adventure mode, uh, making burrows, um, nobles, kings and queens, dealing with them, uh, de dealing with uh, trade caravans, dealing with the elves who will declare war on you for using uh, too much wood. Uh, there's all kinds of stuff here under the surface. I really, I, I, I've linked you to, in your homework assignments, there are hundreds of videos on YouTube. And, in, and on your homework assignments, I've given you links to, I want to say, about 200 videos that are just Dwarf Fortress tutorial videos. I've also linked you, of course, obviously, to the Dwarf Fortress wiki, where you can uh, get lots more additional information about every little aspect of the game. Please, please use the Dwarf Fortress wiki while you're playing if you're confused. Um, yeah, and I, and I hope uh, on some level you guys kind of have fun. Uh, we'll be talking about it in class. You have to play this game, follow all of the requirements, and turn in the homework assignment. Uh, excuse me, turn in your save file for one of this week's homework assignments. The other homework assignment, of course, is a play response. I want you to play this game for at least an hour and respond to the questions in the play response. Um, and uh, finally, of course, we'll be having a quiz uh, the week I get back as well on chapter 16, 17, 18. If you have any questions about any of this, please don't hesitate to shoot me an email. Uh, take care, guys. I'll see you later.